So we're going to take a look at the rest of the parts of uh, section 1.3. Okay, the book actually showed a simple version of this. Um, I want to kind of elaborate on it. It's the exponential model. And again, there might be some things that you're like, oh, yeah. Okay, the exponential model. It's basically the concept of having a base and an exponent. So we a lot of times call it A, B to the X a b to the x now a and this is i guess just kind of like some facts but we, we could kind of prove this and you may have heard it said before that the number in front is the starting value Okay, it can also be thought of as the original y-intercept. When we say starting value, we're referring to the y-intercept. Okay, so that's kind of like where your graph starts. And then we have the infamous base. As we talked a little bit yesterday, it could be growth, it could be decay. It all depends on if it's greater than 1 or less than 1. If you have to add that kind of stuff, I just said it verbally, but if you have to add greater than one, less than one, as a little reminder, feel free to do that. Now, look what I did. I just made the equation get a little more fancy. I didn't show it to you that way at first. Let me go back. This is like the basic exponential model. Okay, but it's just true that you can have some shifting. And this is true for any math equation. You can shift. And shifting is when you add or subtract into the equation. So I can add or subtract to x, I could add or subtract more, more to y, which means adding or subtracting at the end of the equation. The horizontal asymptote. Okay, I don't think we talked about that yesterday, might have been something nice to bring up, but all growth and decay problems will approach a horizontal asymptote, okay? And it's kind of the old, you know, if you have, uh, you know, a piece of cake, okay, or an entire cake, and you want to divide it up an infinite amount of times, there's still something there. Not much. People aren't going to be real happy. But if I divide something up over and over, I'm still going to have something. And so that's this asymptote. In other words, you'll never get to zero, You'll never get to zero. Okay, now implied by this, this equation is a couple things. One of the things is that you could do some graphing. Everybody's favorite thing to do, but you could do some graphing. And I want to kind of review that with you. And then we can also do some application. And um, that's another one of everybody's favorite thing to do. Now, when I say graphing, I'm suggesting without a calculator. Because, you know, let's be honest, I'm not going to say, hey, you know, use your calculator to graph that. I mean, I hope that you would even feel like that was kind of a waste of time because I know you can put that in a calculator. Let's talk about some numbers. That's what math's supposed to be. We got all kinds of cool stuff we're going to do with calculus. Can't wait to get there, but this stuff's important too. So you look at this equation. I know it's kind of obvious, but you look at it and you say X is in the exponent. That means this is exponential. Okay, maybe you then also notice that the base is greater than one. That means it's going to be growth. You don't necessarily have to write this up, but you kind of say it. And this number, I know maybe you didn't come to class ready to say this, but it's the asymptote. And I always like to tell kids that like you can, you can start with that. This is the asymptote. In other words, no matter what else happens in this problem, there's going to be an asymptote at negative 5. And you can draw it, like first. You don't have to do it first, but you can. Okay, but there's a graph, right? I mean, we need, like, a picture. And so we need a point. 
Okay, and one of the points is the starting value. Now the starting value is that invisible number in this problem in front of the base. The starting value is one. The starting value is one. Now maybe you're like, what do you mean starting value? Well, I, I said it's the y-intercept. So we can mark it on the y-axis. Okay, we can mark zero, one. But there's going to be some problems you do where it may be necessary to do a little bit of math over in the margin. A little math over in the margin, like plugging in zero. You've heard that before. You've plugged in zero in an algebra class. So when you plug in zero, you get the y-intercept. Okay. Now, that's two to the zero. It's kind of interesting. Two to the zero, of course, is one. Minus five is negative four. Oh, wait a minute. I thought we said the y-intercept was one. Okay, here's where we kind of kind of be careful. One is the starting value. And I want you to realize that's true. One is the starting value. But it actually went, un it, it, it undergone some shifting. You see, negative five is also a shift down. It's also a shift down. So if you think about it, oh, okay, if I start at one and I shift down, oh, I am going to be at negative four. Now we can mark the y-intercept. That one that I marked, just make sure that you don't overuse it as part of your graph. Because when you draw your graph, now remember, it's a growth graph. It's growth. So you want to draw what we commonly call exponential growth. You know, one of these lines. It grows exponentially, but it approaches this asymptote. Okay? And then we have this point that... Uh, is also part of the solution. Okay, If you're kind of like, so what's the answer? I mean, the answer is the graph and then any of the work that was required to get there without a calculator, right? We did that without a calculator. How about the x-intercept? The x-intercept. A lot of times they go together, right? The x and y-intercept. Now, the thing about the x-intercept is that you also plug in 0, but remember, you plug it in for y. You plug it in for y. Now, when you plug it in for y, you actually have to do like a little bit of solving. Okay, so I kind of don't want you to be surprised that you actually have to solve this equation. And at some point, you realize what you've just made. You made a little monster. You made an equation that has x in the exponent. How do you solve equations with x in the exponent? How do you solve equations with x in the exponent? How do you solve equations with x in the exponent? You have to hit it with a, it's not a baseball bat, but you have to hit it with a lock. You have to smack it with a lock. Okay? If sure. you're like, what is going on here? Well, I'm swinging a baseball bat to try to help you remember that when you smack an equation with a lock, the exponent comes tumbling down. The exponent comes tumbling down. Listen, that exponent up there, that x that was up there, was causing this dilemma. The solution to the dilemma is to smack it with a lock, because now the x comes down in front of the lock. Okay. Now this is uh, this is some heavy duty math, but it should have been talked about in algebra two. It should have been gone over even last year in your trig class. But remember, if you're saying, yeah, I don't remember that, don't be stuck there. Don't be stuck and say, I don't remember, but keep learning because, you know, we're still going to have to do the log of both sides. Do the log of both sides. Now, this is a calculator thing. So I'm 
I'm doing something here. We did this without a calculator. And now I'm saying, but we would need a calculator to, to find the X intercept. Okay. You know, if you feel like you can type that in a calculator, great. If you want to practice it, you know, it's always good to play along. I'm going to write down 232. Just make sure you understand that 232 would be the division of the log of 5 divided by the log of 2. And it's the x-intercept. My, this log is kind of hurting a little bit. The knob is coming out, but it makes a cool sound. I also have some teeth marks. Must have been like a monster or something, or my dog must have been playing with it. I'm smiling under here. It's, I love that analogy. Let's do another problem. Remember, I'm not presenting this like you've never seen it, but I am trying to also talk about like many things through a few problems. Try not to be overwhelmed because I bet there's going to be something in this problem that's kind of new or maybe that you didn't remember right before you came in here. I don't know. What, what do you think like when you look at that? Like... Anything that's true. It's always fun to hear from you, too. Go ahead, Bryce. Okay. He kind of asked it like a question, but yeah, it looks like your starting value should be three. I mean, that's what this said. Now, if you're like, yeah, but it changed over here. Do you understand that we started there, but we shifted? So I, we should be able to start there. Do you see any shifting? Do you see any plus or minus things like at the end of the equation? Okay, I know you don't. So that means that we're going to stay there. All right, so it's our starting value and it's like our y-intercept. What else? Somebody asked about E yesterday, didn't they? E's a number. I mean, it depends on if you remember it or even from yesterday, but it's a number. It's 2.7. Oh, wait, is that greater than or less than 1? Well, it's greater. Okay, it's greater. So it looks like we have a growth number. Anything else? Again, if you're so inclined to share what you're thinking. How about the asymptote? How about the number that's added at the end of the equation? It would be a big, fat zero. Okay, now that's important because that's still a number. And just by the way, every graph has an asymptote. Every exponential graph has an asymptote. Now, if you want to, you can mess around with the y-intercept, you know, like the whole like plug in zero. I say if you want to, because we kind of talked about it already, but it doesn't hurt to make sure that it's what you expect. Plus, it gives us an opportunity to talk about e to the zero, anything to the zero, e to the zero, anything to the zero is one. So... We just kind of confirmed what we maybe already knew, that the y-intercept is 3. Okay, well, you know you can't just ignore the negative, right? I mean, it's there, but maybe you're trying to figure out what to do with it. When you throw negatives around, and watch, you know, they're oh, out, negative, ouch. If you start throwing negatives around, it changes the graph. It changes a parabola. It changes a sine wave. 
I'm saying that because it's supposed to be a hint. Do you remember how it changes graphs when you start throwing negatives around? It changes the graphs. It'll do something to a parabola, a sine wave, any graph. When you look at a, maybe at some water in like a nice still lake, you will see your reflection. It's a reflection. Now there's two types of reflections. There's a reflection this way. Okay. We would call that a horizontal reflection, but you're reflecting over a vertical line. So it like goes like this. And then there's a reflection this way. We call that a vertical reflection but it's over a horizontal line, okay? Which is which? If the negative is on X, it changes the X. To change an X is to go this way, okay? So this was growth. It was, hold on, it was growth, but now it's going to be reflected. So it's going to change the X, going to change the x. So what was once growth actually when it comes to drawing the sketch becomes decay. Do you need to add other things to your notes? It's a different kind of class. You're not reading a book. Uh, you're not listening to like a lecture like that. You need to write stuff down like maybe something like you know, this was reflected. Maybe you want to say it was reflected, um, you know, over the y-axis. Maybe you just remember, like I said, that if x is negative, in other words, if x is changed, if x is changed, it would have to be a change this way. What do you think? There's no x-intercept, right? There's no x-intercept, so it's sort of silly to try to go find it. Now listen, when you start your next assignment, I know you just got done one, but when you start your next assignment, there's going to be some problems that say to draw a graph or some kind of directions like that. Do it this way. Do it without a calculator. Okay, kind of the way that I'm modeling for you is to be the way that you practice it in your assignment. Now, you could maybe use a calculator to check some stuff or if you're stuck, but again, try to do the stuff without a calculator. How much work do you need to show? Um, might not be too much. I mean, I have some work up here. I plugged in zero, but some of this might just be drawing the graph. You actually could do a lot of this problem just by looking at the numbers and drawing a graph. So again, the work that you show might vary, and that's okay. I challenge you to try to think of at least one thing that you would know. I don't want to put you on the spot, but you know, if I was going to call on you, Maybe you would say, Aaron? Now, that's very good. How'd you get that? Good. Okay, now, uh, I love the explanation just so people can hear it. Again, we start at negative two. The shift is up. But in the end, it's zero, negative one. Like Aaron said, what else do you know? Good. Uh, Sing. Why? Now, I don't think I would draw this, but I kind of wonder if you're already thinking this. Okay. 
Okay, how can this be? How can there be an asymptote, but yet, as Zane said, it's growth? So how can this be? Well, we have one more thing to reconcile. It's that negative sign. Now remember, what happens when you throw? start throwing negative signs around? You get a reflection. Okay, how is this negative sign thrown around? Is it on X? Or is it on, we would say it's on Y? In other words, it's like on the front of the equation. Wouldn't it flip over the x-axis? So would it flip over the x-axis? Um, I think so. It would be a vertical flip. Okay, now I say I think so because I'm trying to remember the rules when you have a shift. But I'll be honest with you, we don't. We don't need to be specific. We just need to realize it's going to flip. It's going to flip. So this piece that's going down here is now actually flipping there. This piece here that was going up is now reflecting here. Now, I don't know everything. I don't expect you to either, but I kind of, by drawing that, realized an answer to something I, I was honest and said I wasn't sure. Do you realize what we actually flipped over? We didn't flip over the y-axis technically. We flipped over this axis. So it turns out that that point right there is kind of like our pivot, not pivot point, but it has the line that we pivot over. It's not that big of a deal. I'm not going to ask you that. It's more important you realize that it flipped. Now, it's not decay. It's not decay. We would say that it's reflected growth. It's reflected growth. So, yes, the graph is now going down, but it's not a decay graph because a decay graph has to go down like this. It's a little different. That's just some extra information. If you draw the graph correctly, that's the idea. How about the uh, x-intercept? The x-intercept. Why don't we talk about that when you guys get back? Thank you.